Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Thomas Triber, and on behalf of Hennessy Sports, we welcome you to the Napoleon Casino as we get set for a night of championship boxing to be held this Saturday at the Magna Center. It is being brought to you by Hennessy Sports, along with their great sponsors, Maxi Muscle, Liquid Caffeinated Water, Modeling Network, Sheffield United Football Club, and the Compass Group. We would at this time like to thank the Napoleon Casino, the host of today's press conference, and also a big thanks to the Sheffield Star newspaper, our media partner. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a reminder that this Saturday the doors will open at 5 p.m. Our first fight will begin at 5.30 p.m. And it will also be televised live on Channel 5 beginning at 8 p.m. But we encourage those of you in the area to join us at the Magnus Center. You can purchase your tickets through the Hennessy Sports Box Office, Ticket Line, or through Ticketmaster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a tremendous night of boxing action in store for you this Saturday night. And in addition to a great main event with two undefeated fighters squaring off, we have an undercard that will be showcasing such fighters as undefeated middleweight sensation Chris Eubank Jr. and undefeated world youth heavyweight champion Huey Fury. Our main event, it is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing, and it will be for the vacant British Super Bantamweight Championship. At this time, I would like to introduce to you one of the participants joining us here this afternoon. He is undefeated with 14 wins. Seven of his 14 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the reigning WBC International Super Bantamweight Champion, Kid Callahan. And Kid is joined by his trainer, Dominic Ingle of Ingle's Gym. <laughs> and his opponent this Saturday night, not with us here this afternoon. He's undefeated with 16 wins, five come by way of knockout. He hails from Liverpool, and his name is James Jazza Dickens. And here representing James is his manager, Paul Trainer. The manager of James Dickens. Are you playing then? Well, Jim Dickens playing. Just got to try and get a few pounds off and I'll be alright. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, Mick Hennessy, unable to be here today, so representing Hennessy Sports, and now to say a few words, we welcome Mr. John Engel. Well, I'd like to start off by putting the uh, microphone to Steve Wood and explaining why he's number one prospect and the future of British boxing, uh, Jazza Dickens is here, so everybody knows where we are before we start. Well, uh, we made it over there, uh, we've come the same route as Jazza, but unfortunately the, the car with Paul Stevenson, his trainer, and Jazza in it, it broke down on the moors, so um, <laughs> we can't even get a signal to find out if they're on the way, they might be here in two minutes, or um, they might be waiting for the aid, so unfortunately it's not here yet, they might be, but if really not, I'll turn it really down. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. I know where we are with that one. Um, this fight, I mean, it's, it is a shame that Jazz is not here. We just hope that he uh, is there on Saturday night. And he doesn't he is sat, you don't worry about that. He's <laughs> <laughs> not showed up for anything, anything, yet, anything yet. But it's, it's a good fight. It's a 50 50 fight. This fight was made 12 months ago for the English title. Um, we withdrew Barry. We thought it was all risk and no reward, but now 12 months later, it's all reward and, and no risk. So uh, time, things have changed over the 12 months. I think Jazz has plateaued. Barry kids in the gym will say you know, like over the last 12 months he's improved beyond beyond doubt he's uh, been sparring the likes of Scott Quigg, Ricky Burns, Mendes the IBF super, super featherweight champion and I think Barry is a different fighter from 12 months ago whereas Jazz Dickens is exactly the same fighter as he was 12 months ago it was a, it's a handful there you know will it be an handful to Barry now I, I don't think so if people have got it down as a 50-50 fight 
uh, come Saturday night we'll uh, find out who the real deal is. It's an uh, unusual situation that both Barre and Jazza have been nominated for the Young Boxer of the Year by the sports writers and they're taking on each other, both unbeaten fighters. There's not a lot of guys that would fight each other at this, this level of British title. They might hang on for a European or a world like Scott Quigg and Cole Frampton. They talk about fighting, but these guys talking about fighting and they're actually doing it. So hopefully uh, Jazz is there on Saturday night. Uh, I'll hand it over to Barrett to say a few words. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for turning up. It's weird. What can I say? Loads of people have turned up and, uh, and I appreciate that. I'm sorry Jazza Dickens couldn't turn up. And uh, Saturday night, I will be the British champion. I'll turn up. I don't know if he'll turn up. Hopefully he does. And uh, it's going to be a tremendous performance. It's always a bit disappointing when you know the opponents don't turn up. It is a great fight. Um, you know, Jazza can fight. He's a tough kid. He's a scouser. Uh, obviously, his manager turned up and his sponsor in good faith, hoping that he turned up. But things do happen. I mean, it does sound a bit dodgy that he brought down the, on the motorway. But at the end of the day, some fighters prepare in different ways. Um, you know, they don't like to leave home. They like to be within the comfort zone. And you know, it can't be much of a you know a pleasure for Jazz to come to Sheffield and have to face you know one of the top super bantams in the country. But unfortunately, that's how it is. And uh, you know, Steve Wood's done a great job getting Jazz up there, got him the English champion. And we said all along. You know, they could have boxed each other for the English title, but people wouldn't have given it too much thought. Jazz is probably getting three or four times as much for this fight. Barry's definitely getting a good payday. Uh, and it's, it's the right move. Jazz unbeaten, Barry's unbeaten. And like I say, I don't have no doubt whatsoever that he's going to turn up on Saturday night. So, you know, don't be cashing your tickets back in at the box office. Um, it will be a good fight. Jazz is going to bring a load of fans over. Hopefully there's not going to be any trouble and it's going to be a, you know, a decent affair. It's going to be a good scrap. You know, and whoever comes out on top comes out on top. You know, I've got a, a good feeling it's going to be Barry. I think most people have. But never, you know, never doubt the underdog. You know, Jazza can fight. He'll come for a fight. Uh, we've seen him action plenty of times. There's a lot of people behind him. And a lot of people's hopes are behind him from, from Liverpool. So I don't think by him not turning up today, he's not going to turn up on Saturday. You know, Steve Wood will be probably around at his house tonight, finding out where he is and, uh, you know, dragging him over to Sheffield. That's the kind of guy he is. So hopefully Jazza's going to turn up. And we're going to have a cracking night on Saturday. Jazz, obviously, Jazz hasn't turned up because he's saying he's uh, he's stuck on the what is it Snake Pass M62. M62. Well, I hope on Saturday night he didn't come up with some excuses after I beat him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Listen, I'll give you all some advice. Jazz is two to one. That's the best bet you'll ever get all year. So jump on that. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I'm just saying you, the bookies don't often get it wrong. The, the, the bookies very rarely get it wrong, but they made a big mistake here. And <laughs> even, we don't know what your paddy's going to turn up, whether it's going to be the runner or the big runner. Now, if it's just the runner, he'll uh, get a knockout as well, so we'll, uh, we'll all earn a bit more money. So don't worry, Jazz is coming in on uh, Saturday. All I'm saying to you is that Jazza can't beat me. No way in that ring. If he wants to stand there and have a fight, I'll stand there and have a fight with him. If he wants to try and outbox me, he can try and outbox me. But all I'm saying to you, on that night, I'm guaranteed he's going to get sparked out. <laughs> well, I, I managed Josh Warrington, who's beat... Um, Barry twice in the amateurs and uh, he says he's a bit of a powder puncher so I can't see him knocking Jazza out but um, we'll, we'll find out and uh, the bottom line here is these are two very good kids they're both undefeated but the truth is they've not really fought anyone at a high level yet so we'll find out on Saturday night who's the real deal. He, he has been known as a bit of a, a bit of a liar to you throughout his career but we've done two tests on Barry of late and we've done the uh, paper bag test where we put him in a paper bag and he's managed to punch his way out of that and we uh, we did a rice pudding test and he could knock the skin off that as well so we think his, his power's improved uh, drastically and all he's got to do is on Saturday night is, is you know he's put that kind of power onto onto Jazza and I'm sure if he could pass them two tests he shouldn't have any problems dealing with, with Jazza Dickens <laughs>
Nothing about it. <laughs> right, what we're going to do now, we're going to have uh, one of them uh, wrap downs where they get in front here, Barry's going to do his, and Steve's going to oh, do his, right. and they're going to wrap it down and see who comes out on top. And if Barry can manage to do Steve, that's another good indication that we're going to win on Saturday night. <laughs> there you go, Thomas. Questions from the medium? Yes, please. I'm a bit confused. How do you know the broke down on the moors if there's no signal? <laughs> <laughs> Tech telling me they've broken down on the moors, and I've been ringing back, and there's no signal to get through to them. And they're texting the phone. Texting back after they're here, 100% convinced that is the case. Well, I've got to believe them. I, I couldn't tell you 100%, but uh, that's what I've been told, and uh, I, I believe them, yeah. Blame it on the network. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve. Steve. Jazz is a good boxer. Um, you are saying to me that basically you think he's going to knock Barry out. Right? When you look at his rec look at their record, right? Um, Barry's box box better people than Jazz himself. But at the end of the day, they've both got the kind of almost the same, same as record. What I'm saying to you is, can you really put your hand on your heart and say that basically Jazz is going to spark him out? Um, I'm confident if he does stand and have a fight, like he said he was going to do, that he will do. Um, but I don't think he'll stand and have a fight with him, no, certainly he's, he's, when he um, he feels his first power, because he's a big puncher, Jazz. His record doesn't show it, and mainly because he's a boxing journeyman who don't want to, want to have a fight. So um, we'll find out on, on Saturday, as I said before. But yeah, I'm confident, uh, very confident. I must say Steve is confident because when we withdrew Barry last year from the English title fight, the stick that we got off him saying, what's up, is he scared, is he this, is he that, you know, like he, he, he's confident 100%, he's not ducking and diving and can we do this and can we do that, you know, like he's wanted the fight and Jazz has wanted the fight from 12 months but we didn't, we didn't think it was a big enough fight for where the lads were in their careers but you know, like it's live on Channel 5 now, you know, I've got a good crowd at, at Magna and the, the fight has got all the makings of a, a thriller and a classic. We just uh, hope that it lives up to everybody's expectations. Dominic, how's the, how's the um, training process gone with, with, with Barry? And plus, you've known Barry a long, long time. Have you done anything different than you, you do for any other fight? Well, this is a big one, this is his first major, major title other than the WBC, what he's already won. One of Barry's best attributes is that he never goes out of shape in between fights. I mean, probably in the last 12 months he hasn't had that many fights. But he's always on, he's always, always on his training. He's always around sparring people. Like I say, he's been up to spar Ricky Burns in Scotland, did a week up there. You know, he's, he's sparred some decent kids. But, you know, he's more focused. He's, obviously, it's a British title fight. Uh, we've done things, little things, minor alterations, minor differences. But, you know, the way he trains anyway, the way he fights, he's been, he's been in the gym for nearly 10 years. Uh, you know, and he's, he started as, off as a young lad at 14, and uh, when Junior Whittle was world champion, he was with him, he sparred with Kell Brook. You know, the kids in the game who he spars with, they know he's a decent talent. He sparred Rendell Monroe, all these guys. You know, he sparred bigger kids, smaller kids, everybody. So, you know, he's, he's, he's done his apprenticeship, he's been around the country sparring everybody, which has, you know, James, James Dickens, even Jazz has been over to the gym and sparred. He sparred a few of our lads. So, you, you get a good idea, but you can never work anything out on, you know, our sparring goals. On the night of a fight, when the adrenaline's going, anything can happen. But, you know, Barry's done everything right. He's done his weight right. He's done his, his fitness right. He's done his sparring, his technique, his diet, everything. And he, like he's here today, um, he's drinking his water, he's eating food. And, you know, Jazz is well documented. He's not going to make in the way. He's probably wringing himself out in a, in a sweatshop somewhere in Liverpool. Jazz and that's generally what, jam, jam what they, they do. What happens is with fighters, and I know because I've, I've been in the business, when fighters are struggling to make the way, the last place they want to leave is home. They want to stay in the comfort zone where they're familiar. They don't want to be coming to Sheffield two days before a fight, being in unfamiliar circumstances, thinking, can I find a sauna or somewhere to get this weight off? Or if somebody sees me running around the block, I'm struggling to make the way. We know that Jazz is going to be struggling to make the way. And after six or seven rounds when he runs out of gas, that's when Barry's going to knock him out. Yeah. So it doesn't, matter whether, it doesn't matter whether Jazz comes to fight or stands with him or like Steve says. You know, Barry's going to do what he's got to do. And when they get into that ring on a Saturday, it's going to be a good fight while it lasts. But when you know you've done your job right, and you know as a trainer that your fighter's done the job right, there's no help, you know what the outcome's going to be. 
and you know Jazza didn't turn up today for the, for the press conference he didn't turn up uh, at his gym last week for some uh, filming for Channel 5 and Sky wanted to film him there's a boxer who's trying to make his name on the big world stage it's no good getting to that getting to British title level and thinking I don't want to be on the cameras how's he ever going to do a 24-7 in America if he ever gets his big chance boxing's not just about getting in the ring it's dealing with the nerves and the anxiety of a big fight and thing is with Jazza he's nervous he's on edge and having to walk into Barry's backyard in Sheffield, no matter how many fans he brings, Barry's going to walk out in his front door, walks into the venue, gets ready, ready to fight. Jazz is going to have to travel, be away from home. They're all going to be biting the nails down to the finger bones because they know what's coming. You can only get, you know, but he's had 16 fights. You know, it's, it's time for him to fight somebody. And, you know, unfortunately, he's come across at a time when we've got a good kid in the division, which is Kid Galahad. So, you know, he's not done that much different, Barry. He's done everything what he, he normally does, a little bit more. He's trained on, he's been focused for the last 12 weeks. So, you know, he's gone from the last fight he had, boxer southpaw, kid who'd never been stopped, done the distance with Rendell Monroe. Yeah, mate, might have been past his sell by day. We didn't last more than three or four rounds with Barry. So, you know, southpaw kid, we were preparing, you know, way back then for Jazza. And um, we've had a good look at Jazza, we've seen what his style is. And um, we've got everything, on, everything that he's going to bring, Barry's going to counteract and, and get on top of him. So, you know, that's the answer to your question, Rick. Stevenson saying that uh, you've been sat in your bedroom typing schoolboy stuff on Twitter, uh, slagging and trash talking your opponent. Did you? I haven't seen anything myself. And if so, what do you make of that assessment of the schoolboy aspect? Who's hand promotions? Who is it? Patton. Who is it? Oh, Paul Stevenson is Paul Stevenson. Who's Paul Stevenson? Who is it? <laughs> 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 Who's the other one? Who's the other one? He's spending more time on Twitter than he's spending in the gym, and he's supposed to be his trainer. That's the only answer. Uh -oh. Sorry, the saying, the saying, and you can see on Steve, uh, the saying that basically Jazz is too big, it, it, it's strong, and he can punch and this. At the end of the day, you're talking about, do you think you can take his power? Rick, you know me. <laughs> you know me, Rick. You know what I'm good at. He's shorter than me. He can, he probably, he probably will be bigger than me when he gets in that ring. But that doesn't, for every advantage is always a disadvantage. That don't, that don't mean nothing. And when we get in that ring, him crashing that weight off, he's going to feel it. I'm tell you that now. He's going to feel it. Jazz is four ounces above the weight today. I've been in the gym room this morning. Four ounces Should have come weight. with you. What's he been in the gym for this morning because only four hours of work? Why? What's he been doing? Having a laugh and a joke and playing cards? He's never been in the gym, but I think last time Barry was in the gym. Is that right? I thought you told me this was sponsored, you're not the one who makes excuses for him. I don't make excuses for no one, I won't make excuses for Saturday. Anyone else? Kim, what's it mean to you be, to be fighting for a British title? A British title is a good title to fight for, but for me, personally, I think it's just another stepping stone to where I want to be, and that's to be a world champion. And uh, after this, hopefully, uh, I'm in line for the European title next, and I'm, I'm going to hopefully I'll fight for that. Any further questions from the media? Well, Kid will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. And uh, we also want to remind you that we're going to be hosting the weigh-in tomorrow at 1 p.m. at Tony Curry Suite at Sheffield United Football Club. The weigh-in is open to the public. We hope to see you there. And I believe this concludes today's press conference. Any further comments from the panel? Well, reminder, ladies and gentlemen, tickets can be purchased through the Hennessy Sports Box Office, Ticket Line, or through Ticketmaster. We're hoping to see all of you this Saturday night at the Magnus Center. Again, doors open at 5, first fight at 5.30, and we go live on Channel 5 beginning at 8 p.m. Well, thank you for coming out on behalf of Hennessy Sports. Have a great day. Please drive safely. Thank you.